Hi everybody, my name is Bohush, speaking for Videoblocks. I'm here to show you how easy it is to find amazing content on Videoblocks.com. Then we're going to walk through getting Videoblocks Media into Sony Vegas Pro, so you can easily add lots of production value and professionalism to your next project. Are you ready? Let's get started. Here's what the Videoblocks website looks like. The Videoblocks website is actually a powerful search engine and media browser. So let's type in our username and password. Now that we've logged in, we can start searching and previewing media. You can use the search tool right up here, or by hitting the Browse button, you can kind of uh, see what's new and what's exciting and check out categories. And this is a nice way to get started if you've never looked at video blocks before. Now there's a lot of royalty-free content here, and your subscription gives you access to all of it. There are no hidden fees later on. And what else is cool is that you can access your account from wherever you are. So you don't have to carry around bulky media, uh, nor do you have to pay for clips, you know, like in a DVD collection, uh, that you won't ultimately use. You just download what you need, and you can use it any way you want. Your video block subscription unlocks unlimited access to everything you find on the site. We'll search for some of the same clips that I used for this little project I made just using downloaded assets from Videoblocks. Okay, ha ha ha. So that's our little joke clip. Let's see what we've got in here. Looks like we have a kind of a newsroom set. We've got an animated graphic. The title came from the uh, editing program. Then we have, oh, we have some sort of flare wipe. We have slow motion footage of the TV falling and a lower third. And then a title again from our nonlinear editor. So we've got a couple clips to find. Let's get started by finding this uh, virtual newsroom set. Fortunately, searching through all this content is really easy. Every page on videoblocks.com has the search tool right here in the upper right. So we just enter in, let's say, newsroom. And notice there's a pull down where we can choose either search absolutely everything on the site or just video, just audio. So let's stick with just video and hit that little magnifying glass. And here are the newsroom files. Now what's cool is that this page is actually a media browser. So to get a preview of the clip, just hover your mouse over it and a little window will open up and actually show you an animated preview. And this is a great way to look through stuff very, very quickly. Okay, it looks like, uh, yeah, this is the one we used. So let's just uh, left click on it to get more details and to actually download. So here's what it looks like. You get a preview again that you can play back scrub through if you need to see something specific. You also get some details and even Facebook stuff. If you want to like it on Facebook or comment on it, uh, this is very useful as the site grows. You're going to get uh, peer reviews of each of these clips. So the red button is how you download and that's all you have to do is just click on it and you're downloading. Note underneath it you can see the actual specs of the clip. Now this is in HD it's at 1920 by 1080. It's 29.97 frames per second. It's in QuickTime format, .mov format. And all you have to do to download it is just click download. And I'll put it in a folder on my desktop, which I've entitled Video Blocks Downloads. So while that's downloading, let's uh, let's look for the next footage that we need for our little demo clip, which was the uh, dropping slow motion television set. Now we can search for it using the search tool at the top of the page. But if you look at the left, there's this column of categories, and that's another way you can search. You can actually see a, a wider selection of similarly themed footage all at the same time. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the categories. We see there's a slow motion category. If we click on it, we see that breaking and smashing is one of the categories. Let's click on that and take a look. Aha. Okay, lots of stuff here. And as we scroll down, we can see there's a, uh, there's a slow motion old TV, uh, a little different television being done in by a sledgehammer. Let's uh, look at this clip right here. That's a different model of TV. Works well, though. Uh, let's see. Ah, there it is. Slow motion dropping and breaking. Front view. 
This is exactly the one we used. So let's uh, let's click on this and take a look. Here's the page for this video clip. It gives you all the details we got before. But notice one important difference. This is available to download in two different formats. You can download it in MP4 or you can download it in MOV. Now the image size is the same. They're both full HD 1920 by 1080 video clips. The difference really is the file size. The MP4 is slightly more compressed and so it gets you a file size of only 28 megs, whereas the full MOV is 236 megs. Uh, so actually, there's a big difference between those two. Visually, the MP4 is more compressed, so it's really more designed for work that's going to go out on the web, or uh, maybe you need to download a lot of clips so you can kind of experiment and preview. MP4 is great for that. If you're doing something a little more high profile, a little more high end, and you need the photo JPEG codec, well, the .mov is there as well. Just uh, be prepared to wait a little longer to download it, and of course, you'll need uh, a little extra space. Also, not all nonlinear editors play nice with MP4 or MOV. You'll just need to choose the format that's right for you. For our purposes, the MP4 is just great. So we're going to download it, and I want you to remember that it is full HD, 1920 by 1080. That's important to keep in mind if you're working at a different project size. Uh, we'll have an example of this a little bit later. So let's just click to download. While that's loading, it's time to go looking for sound and some music. Now, uh, we can use the search tool. We can use uh, audio has its own category browser. Let's uh, Let's just see what we get if we put in news. And we'll search just audio and click the magnifying glass. News and hover. And again, you get those great little previews. Oh, okay, that sounds so newsy. Uh, so let's click on that. That's the one we're going to use. Here's the page with more details about the audio clip we were just previewing. Uh, you can hear it again if you need to. And you're presented with two choices for downloading. You can download an MP3 or you can download a WAV file. Now, it's the same caveat as before. The MP3 is compressed to uh, give you a tiny file size, while the WAV is the full uncompressed audio clip. In my work, usually I'll use the MP3 if I'm previewing stuff, especially for a client, and then um, I'll go back and grab the wave because they're not that huge. You know, they're not going to eat up your life through all this downloading. Uh, for right now, let's just grab the MP3 and we'll download it to my machine. While our video blocks are downloading, let's crack open Sony Vegas. This is Sony Vegas Pro version 12, uh, but really these techniques, these are some of my favorite tips. These will work in any version of Vegas pretty much. So first thing we need to do is set up a new project. So go File, New, and then up here are uh, project sizes that are pre-made for you. I'm going to go with a 720 project that uh, runs in 24p. And this is an important option down here. It says adjust source media to better match project or render settings. That's uh, asking whether you want it to uh, scale things internally and make things fit in the uh, project window. Sometimes that's nice, especially when you're in a hurry. But uh, we're going to be doing a little trick here uh, that requires us to turn this off. So I'm going to turn it off right now. Click OK. And so we've got a 720p timeline waiting for video. So now let's import our video blocks. This is from a folder on my desktop. I'm just going to click a few things uh, just for our demonstration purposes. Now remember all of these clips were downloaded at 1080. So watch what happens when I take the uh, control room set and drag it into our 720p timeline. Vegas asks us if we want to change the project size to match the video we just dragged in. We want that project to stay at 720, so let's say no. Now the, uh, the video clip still looks the same, but internally it is at 1080. So internally it is about a third larger than this output size. Because we have extra resolution to play with, that means we can actually push into this image. We can zoom in, or we can move left and right, we can recompose, we can animate some camera moves that aren't in the original clip, and we can do it all without losing any quality, right? We'll be at a one-to-one -one relationship even when we're zoomed in. Let me show you how to do that. 
The clip has this little crop marker. This is the pan crop tool. Click on it, and this is our workspace. Let's uh, actually zoom out just a little bit so we can see a little more. Okay, now this, this window that surrounds our video, that's kind of like our, think of it almost like a virtual camera. This is what we're going to see on our timeline. Now you'll note that the virtual window is at 1920 by 1080, the original image size of this video. So if we knock it down, like, okay, let's say, move this a little bit so we can see our, our playback timeline. Oh, and here's another bit of advice. Keep this icon on that says sync cursor. This is in the uh, pan crop, in the pan crop tool. That means changes we make here in the tool we'll see on the preview output monitor, which is terribly, terribly useful. So let's see. Let's do a nice zoom. You know, we start out with everything normal. And then let's say at about two seconds in, we want to be zoomed in already by about 30%. So what we can do is we can either interactively do this. We can interactively just pull a corner. Uh, if you And all you need to do is make sure that the width and height never, uh, never are outside of 1280 by 720. Don't make them any smaller than that because then Vegas is in fact scaling. So I'm just going to uh, type it right in to make sure that I'm being precise. 1280. And because the aspect ratio is locked, it automatically puts in 720. So now we are pushed into the center of our image. And we can, we can have that push in happen anywhere. And we're not losing any quality. We are at one to one. So let's put it over here on the left. And then we'll move another two seconds down the timeline. And we will uh, pull this window to the right. And that means that with our three keyframes, now watch the preview window here. We're going from the full vista of the 1080 clip, and we gradually zoom in to the left of the set, and then we go to the right, and there you go. So kind of understanding the image sizes and what you're outputting gain you this, this extra little trick. Now this wouldn't work as well if you were doing a 1080 project because as you push in you're actually stretching out pixels and that's not going to look too great. But in this case 1080 footage in a 720 project gives you this little extra bit of wiggle room that you can do fun stuff with. Okay now let's work with an alpha channel. Uh, as you can see we've got this flame footage and from the looks of this icon it looks like well it's, it's a transparent overlay with fire on it and it looks like it's ready to go. So let's drag it into our timeline. I'm just sort of hovering over our newsroom set. Of course, having a newsroom that's engulfed in flames is news in itself. But notice this, it's not cutting out, you know, it's not cutting out this black area. And that's because we actually have to turn the alpha channel on. Right click on the clip itself, select properties, and uh, if you go into media properties, you'll notice there's an alpha channel chooser right here. And right now it's selected, it says none. If we turn it on as straight unmatted and click OK, let's go into the clip a little bit here. You now see that the fire is being overlaid on top of the newsroom set, exactly like what we wanted. When you bring an alpha channel into your project, you need to let Vegas know the alpha channel is there by turning it on in properties. Now. It is worth experimenting because there are a couple different alpha channel modes. This straight alpha channel mode, it, it looks a little bit like a key. The flames are just keyed on top of the background. But you can do something a little fancier. I usually try to, I give this a try to see if it's going to get me anything or not. Instead of going with straight unmatted, go with pre-multiply and click OK. And now notice the smoke from the original clip is coming through as well. So it's not just the flame on the bottom like a cutout. It's, uh, it feels a little more integrated into this space. You know, we're seeing through this rising smoke to the, uh, to the newsroom that has caught fire. Okay, those were just a couple tips I wanted to share with you. Uh, Vegas does a lot of stuff automatically behind the scenes. And there are times where it's beneficial to say, hey, Vegas, back off. I know what I'm doing. Uh, I use this all the time because most of my projects are at 720. Everything I download from video blocks is a 1080. Being able to recompose and add movement to shots is huge. Okay, let's wrap things up. We've walked through the first steps you'll need to get started using video blocks.
In a future video, we might take a detailed look at how I created this crazy clip using only video blocks content. But for now, what's important to remember from this video is how easy and, you know, kind of fun it is to browse on videoblocks.com using the built in media browser. Uh, you also learned about the choices that you have as far as file formats when you're downloading. When it's time to export your finished video, it'll look extra pro thanks to all of the media you downloaded from Videoblocks. Now that you've seen how easy it is to get Videoblocks footage and music into your project, here's the fun part. Just keep exploring the vast collections at Videoblocks.com. You can find the perfect piece to finish a project you're working on now, or get inspired when you're starting something new. Try searching for macro, slow motion, or time-lapse next time you're looking for something really unique to add to your next video masterpiece. And also, don't forget to check out content.videoblocks.com for more ideas on how to get creative with video blocks. My name is Bahush. Thanks for watching.